Hey everyone, welcome. So today in this tutorial, we are gonna talk about two things. The first part is we're gonna talk about our dashboard application, which is basically what you're seeing right now. And then the second part, we're gonna talk about what we call a player properties application. Now, before I dig into the dashboard itself, just a couple of things I want you to be aware of is first off on the left side here is our navigation, which essentially shows you a list of applications that you potentially could have access to. As you can tell right up here in the arrow, you can actually collapse the navigation, which then sort of obviously just shows you the icons. Now, depending on sort of what preference you want, um, the nice thing is, again, whatever preference you pick, it actually saves to your user settings. So what I mean by that is if I were to leave it right here, where it's just showing the icons, I log out for the day, when I came back in the morning and logged back in, this would be sort of the default behavior. In addition to the navigation saving to your user settings, if you go into any application, you'll notice in the bottom right corner, we have the items per page. And as a default, most of the tables in our CMS are gonna be defaulted to 10. But again, especially like media library and playlists, you'll notice this the most. You can certainly change this from 10 to say 50 or to 100. And again, it's gonna remember that. So every time you go back into that application, it will default to whatever you just uh, basically set it to. All right, so talking about the dashboard um, right off the bat here, it's pretty, I think, straightforward, but starting with the top left here, it says network health. Uh, essentially, we have three apps here. So the first one essentially just tells you, hey, these are the percentage of players that you have online and the percentage of players that you have offline within this facility. The second app says offline players. Again, we're really trying to just streamline and communicate to you guys that if there are any players offline in your facility, we don't want to make you essentially hunt for them. Uh, we just want to make it very crystal clear, like, hey, these are your players that are offline, and this is how, you know, recently they fell offline. Four days ago, 17, two months, and so on. The right side here says a most assigned playlist. So essentially how it works is you have a playlist, right? <laughs> Maybe you have multiple playlists. And that's where you're adding your assets, right? Your Canva designs, your JPEGs, your videos, you're, you're basically uploading them and managing them in your, in your playlist. Your playlist basically gets assigned to a layout. The layout essentially is the look and feel. Now, if you have the screen in front of you, if you've seen the layout, the layout usually represents, you know, time and date, right? There's like a logo on there and you've got that layout sort of broken up into different sections with, with different things that layout then gets assigned to, again, a player. So kind of three things, right? Playlist gets assigned to a layout, a layout gets assigned to a player. What we're trying to do in this app right here in that top right corner is really just streamline that like, hey, these are all your playlists right now, and these are the ones that are currently active on the players. So as you can see, if I click on my playlist application, I have two playlists. I have one called My Playlist, and I have one called Corporate Information. And as you can see, Facility Players, my playlist is not running anywhere, but my Corporate Info is running on technically 11 players. But when I go to my dashboard, it says four because the other players were not are offline. So it's only showing me that, hey, this Corporate Info is running on four active players. A goal of that I've got, again, is just to streamline that. And the reason why we're sort of establishing that is there are definitely like different organizations and uh, facilities out there that might have multiple playlists and they might have multiple playlists. Maybe they have like a test one. Maybe they're experimenting with one. Maybe they're doing some onboarding with some of their users. And so, you know, when they do that, they don't necessarily want their users touching, you know, a production playlist until they obviously understand how to use it. So sometimes, again, depending on your organization, if you're managing a lot of playlists, it might be just kind of nice to know like, hey, out of your 10 playlists, like these are really the two or three that are like actively being used. And at that point you could, you know, essentially clean it up, you could delete them um, or you can keep them there. But again, just trying to streamline that. The bottom part here talks about obviously our, our players, right? So it's giving me this nice list of my demo um, players or my demo account, telling me what players are online, what are offline, it gives me the location, of course, the player type. And then we have the actions, right? I can refresh it, I can reboot, or I can get a live screenshot. Now you can see that some of these are grayed out or in a disabled state. Um, any player that's offline, of course you can't refresh it, right? You can't reboot it or screenshot. So that makes sense why they're disabled. As the bright sign here, it is online. It currently says online, but bright sign hardware, you actually just can't refresh them. You can only reboot them. So that's why you see those in a, essentially in a disabled state. 
So that's really, again, quick uh, overview of the dashboard. Um, if I were to click into one of these players, that is where now we go into this player property page. So in this player property page, you can see we grabbed a quick screenshot so you can see what's running on the player. And then we have the player property, the left side here. Really basic stuff, right? You know, what's the name of the player? Where is it sort of located, the resolution? At any point, you can change any of this information out. Up here, of course, is a list of your players, right? So if you accidentally clicked on to one that you didn't want to click on, you can easily just re-click a new one. And then you've got the status right up here that says online or offline. The middle accordion right here called layout schedule. So that is what the what layout is running on this player. And essentially you can change that in any way. You can select it and again, choose whichever layout. The list of layouts, by the way, is communicating with this application called the layout designer. Anytime you switch a layout, so if I were to switch one, we'll just do world clock, hit update. Essentially the player just needs a couple seconds here, but it's gonna pull in this layout. Now this layout is gonna run just 24 seven on the player. For the most part, once this is set, most people don't essentially go and like touch it. But um, again, it's just to help communicate that like, hey, this player, it has this type of configurations and it's pulling from this layout. The bottom right here, so we have alerts, updates, and software and restart. Alerts is basically going to pull in uh, emerge or national weather alerts. So we actually have that capability. We pull from the national weather alert RSS feed. Um, so we can talk a little bit more about it. We won't go into too much detail here, but essentially how it works is if there are any like severe, um, I guess what national weather considers severe, so like tornado warnings, right? Severe thunderstorm, um, obviously if there's like a huge blizzard, what happens is your uh, screen gets taken over with this alert. And obviously it basically has a timestamp on it. It says like tornado warning in this, you know, in these counties. Um, so essentially that's how we sort of apply it to the player and then any emergency alerts that you guys might have. So there's definitely tons of clients out there who use other um, third vendor companies that handle emergency alerts. They produce like a cap or like an RSS feed. Uh, essentially, this is how, again, we apply the alerts to the players. Update and restart players. I'm just gonna kind of merge them together because they're very similar, or not very similar, but they kind of work together essentially. Um, first off, I would not turn these off and <laughs> they are enabled as a default. And then of course you can adjust the time. Um, but essentially what these two are, are doing is it's making sure that your signage and like your player is staying to the latest and greatest version. Um, we never want to make sure that the player gets out of date, right? Or anything like that. So we just automatically update that for you. Now that doesn't mean that like during this time window right here, it says 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. It doesn't mean that the player is going to be like completely down for this amount of time. No, that's essentially what happens is we every player has like a queuing system. And so during this time, whenever your it's your players like turn to like basically refresh or sort of uh, get to the latest version, that's essentially what it will do is just do it at that time. So. Again, don't freak out that like your, your system's gonna be down, you're gonna have these like black screens or anything like that. It's really just pushing the latest and greatest down. And then really uh, kind of talking about that as well, kind of leads into my last part as far as this player property part. So we have the player version and signed version. Again, nothing that you need to sort of be aware of here. I'm just letting you know that this is what I mean when I say player and signed version. But we do have two buttons up here, by the way. One is called about this player, if you click on this. It's really just showing you the player property like information, right? The OS, the storage, the, the MAC address, the public address, right? All this information uh, usually seems to be more valuable information for anyone in like IT and managing the players. Um, this might be sort of useful information for them. And then the other one is advanced settings, which basically allows you to control your NTP or push NTP to a different server. So um, again, those are two buttons. If it fits um, in sort of your, your IT department, if that's information they wanna see, or if you wanna adjust any of that, that's how you get there. So that was our tutorial uh, as far as the dashboard and again, the player property. If you guys have any questions, of course, please let us know. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you.